Right, this time uh, I'd like to talk about uh, the food that we ate. Um, when I was a, a very young child, um, rationing was still in force. Um, I have my uh, last ration book here. Um, it went on, well, to 1953-54 this book is, although it's mostly unused, but certainly some things have been taken out of it. Um, when we first moved into the council house, apparently, <coughs> the, um, the the local shop, um, copy stores, the man came round to, to see Mam and ask her to register with him uh, in order to keep him in business and her to have a, a local shop to go uh, to go to because you had to register um, with a shop for each different category of items: was meat, egg, fat cheese, bacon, sugar and milk. You, in, in this case you registered with him for everything except the, the meat which you registered with the butcher down the village, uh, um, GE Voss. Um, you registered with them and you, and you bought all the rationed items from that shop, that's how it was controlled. Um, so I think this gave, gave um, a man the idea that at least in normal circumstances you always, you always went to the the same local shop for everything. You couldn't just go to a different shop because there were uh, a penny cheaper or something. Because um, if it was a rationed item, then you couldn't. Um, until well, 1953, about there anyway, um, when rationing finished. Now, I just thought I'd, I'd mention what we used to eat in the days when food didn't seem to be a problem. That it is now. Very few people were 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 fat. Um, I know there's all sorts of reasons given why they are now, but I think probably it's the change in food. What we ate anyway was that we always had, um, nearly always anyway, had a joint on Sunday delivered by this Mr. Foss, uh, usually beef. Um, there was problems from time to time. Um, they used to complain about the quality of the meat that we're getting from him. It was tough and gristly or whatever. and. Um, they couldn't, of course, cha change the butcher easily um, at first. But even when they could, man was reluctant because she's from the village, he's from the village, and sort of loyalty is kind of expected. In, I think in the end, it was dad that went down um, to the butchers and counseled it and, and, and arranged to, to have our meat from um, a different butcher, but not to have it delivered this time so that it was that bit easier um, you go. To, you have to go down down the village to fetch it, but you could simply go to a different one to fetch it if if um, if you didn't want it. You didn't have to cancel it because that was considered quite a big uh, a big deal. At least Mum did anyway at the time. Um, another day we'd we'd have the leftovers from from the joint either sliced or minced into a into a shepherd's pie. We'd have liver one day every week, usually lamb's liver. Mum considered it to be the best, though I don't think that's actually true. It may very well have been cheap at that time. Um, some Sundays we, we would have had lamb. Um, quite often we'd have lamb chops in the week because they were very cheap then. This, of course, is before um, uh, the common market as it started off as the, United, the uh, European Union. Um, we, we had um, lamb very cheap from, well, mainly from New Zealand. Um, on Friday, um, the fishman used to come round, and we um, we nearly always had fish. Uh, usually, um, haddock. Um, it's one of those things I remember that my my mother, for some reason, seemed to think that actually, uh, when we ever we had chips, which we would have done sometimes with fish, though not always. Um, I remember I was only allowed eight chips. Uh, I. I Really don't know why that would be, but um, she seemed to have a thing that chips were were bad in some way. Now, uh, looking back on it with a bit of bit more um, perhaps scientific knowledge, the danger isn't in the sheer fact they're chips. The danger is in in refrying and refrying in the same oil. Um, I think that's where it would have come from. Um, well, same oil. I say oil. It was it was lard. It wasn't oil at all. Um, but if you burn fat, then um, it, it it can it can be dangerous, and if you keep re reheating the same fat, in the end, it does become dangerous. Um, that's the danger with chips. It's nothing to do with the, the sheer fact of having chips. Anyway, 
Um, I suppose that was the main meals. Uh, breakfast were commonly, uh, well, Sunday breakfast was nearly always a bacon, egg, tin tomatoes. Um, we never had black pudding. I'm not quite sure why. It's a perfectly um, good thing. Uh, uh, my grandparents, after all, met over making black pudding, but I suppose somebody didn't like it in our family. We didn't, we didn't have it. Um, most of the rest of the week, we for breakfast we'd have um, a bacon and um, well maybe just a, a bacon sandwich or a bacon in or in my case um, egg yolk sandwich because I didn't like egg white so uh, mum used to take separate the egg and, and give me the the, the yolk uh, other people would have of course the the egg and the yolk dad when he was on work days didn't have breakfast he, he used to take um, a, a sandwich with him, which could be a, a cold bacon sandwich. Uh, it, it, it varied. Um, I mentioned at this point he always had the routine of uh, filling the kettle with water the night before. Uh, this was definitely um, a cultural thing. It was a thing that you must do uh, was to fill the kettle with water before uh, the night before, and not to fill it in the morning. Um, he used to also prepare the, he'd get the teapot out and, and the tea bag ready. Uh, sorry, it wasn't tea bag. It would be the tea that, that would be ready in, in the pot. It was loose leaf tea. We had it was only loose leaf tea at that time. It was Thai foo. Thai foo. I remember that we had. Um, I think that the reason that you had to use the water from the night before was probably going back to the days of lead pipes. That if the water was was left in the lead pipes for too long um, overnight, then you, there would be more lead in the water in the morning than there would be otherwise. Um, we didn't have lead pipes, but I think this is a tradition that's 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 been uh, carried down. Um, for teas, um, it would probably be a cheese and ham sandwich. Uh, that kind of thing I'd have. Dad, of course, would have his dinner when he came home. I mean, had the sandwich, sandwiches in during the day. Um, milk was delivered to the door, and I just make a point about milk here that it was milk in bottles, glass bottles, and it had the cream on it. It was ordinary milk, which we've had for centuries. Nowadays, I don't think you get it very often because the milk that they put in uh, plastic cartons is usually homogenized. Now, not just homogenized in the sense of the cream and the, and the milk mixed in so it doesn't separate, but they go to a greater stage now, um, passing it through a filter of almost um, molecule um, level so that all the bacteria, are, well, as far as they can, are left behind and only the, the actual milk itself is blown through. But this means that the milk is, is the, the fat and the protein in the milk are broken down almost to molecular level. Indeed, maybe some of the molecules are actually broken. Um, and I think this makes it easier for them to pass um, through the, your gut wall when they're not supposed to and get in your bloodstream or whatever uh, in fine particles. And this sets off allergic reactions. Um, I think this is where milk intolerance probably comes from. Now, I emphasize this is just my personal opinion. I haven't heard it from anywhere else and I haven't seen any scientific research, but to me um, the the food related illnesses that we get these days surely are likely to be from changes in the food we eat. We've always had milk. Why can't why is milk suddenly dangerous? And I think that's possibly why it is. At that point then I'll say bye for now.